Run Sky is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola, serving Alaskans quality soft drinks since 1937. By Cook Inlet Region Incorporated, an Alaska Native Corporation promoting economic and social progress for people throughout the state. Welcome to One Sky, a special presentation of Heartbeat Alaska, a forum for Native issues and concerns. One voice, one sky. Welcome to One Sky. I'm John Tetpon. And I'm Gary Fife. Today we're going to be speaking about issues of Native Americans and the media. But first, we're going to be taking a look at a video produced by the National Conference of Christians and Jews called Media and the American Indian. Sponsored by the National Conference. The National Conference of Christians and Jews, founded in 1927, is a human relations organization dedicated to fighting bias, bigotry, and racism in America. The National Conference promotes understanding and respect among all races, religions, and cultures through advocacy, conflict resolution, and education. I think that a misunderstanding of history begins with the Columbus myth and then just goes downhill from there. There's well, American Indians are the first Americans, yet when it comes to the public media, they're often the last American. Indians are part of that growth of a more diverse America that's suddenly saying we can't write the way we did newspapers in the 1950s. No other minority in the United States has ever signed a treaty with America. No other minority in the United States has self-government. No other minority has clearly defined borders and boundaries around their lands. And so we are not just another minority. And the best way to understand that is, is say, there is no Bureau of Black Affairs. There is no Bureau of Asian Affairs. But by God, there is a BIA. And that's simple. I, I hope the, the schools of journalism uh, uh, do a better job. Uh, not, uh, they're doing a great job, technically um, speaking. But it's got to be some substance and some understanding and some sensitivity and some knowledge of history. Why is it that we are a secret in the shadows of American society? In June 1992, American Indians and the media met to better understand each other. During a three-day conference at the University of Tulsa entitled The Media and the American Indian, 1492 to 1992 and Beyond, tribal leaders, Indian and non-Indian media professionals, students and the public confronted how the media portrays Indian people. This event was sponsored by the Tulsa and Oklahoma City region of the National Conference. In panel discussions, workshops, theater performance, film and video competition. Participants work together in a positive spirit to dispel myths and stereotypes about the Indian's place in American history and contemporary life. This gathering in Tulsa built on the success of the 1990 media conference in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, sponsored by the National Conference of the Minnesota and Dakotas region. Out of that meeting came a handbook for media professionals, a reference for reporting on American Indians. To share the ideas of the 1992 Tulsa Conference with a larger audience of professionals and students in the print and electronic media, keynote speakers were videotaped responding to five questions about how the media does and doesn't cover Native Americans. The following excerpts feature Wilma Mankiller, Cherokee, Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation, the second largest tribal group in the United States. Tim Gallego, Oglala Sioux, publisher and editor of Indian Country Today, formerly the Lakota Times, America's largest Indian-owned weekly newspaper. Susan Schoen Harjo, Cheyenne and Muskogee, native rights activist and director of the Morning Star Foundation. Gary Fife, Creek and Cherokee, host and executive producer of National Native News. 
the only nationwide Native American radio news program broadcast on more than 150 national public radio stations. Mark Trehant, Shoshone and Bannock, syndicated columnist, news editor for the Salt Lake Tribune, and award-winning investigative reporter. Kirk Kickingbird, Kiowa, law professor and director of the Native American Legal Resource Center. Jack Weatherford, professor of anthropology and best-selling author of Indian Givers and Native Roots. Paul Sand, executive regional director of the Minnesota and Dakotas region for the National Conference. The first question for our speakers, what about Native Americans is the most misunderstood by the media today? There doesn't seem to be any fundamental understanding that all human beings have uh, forms of political and social organization and so there obviously were before uh, the American Republic began to grow, there were governments here uh, on this continent and that American history did not just begin uh, when uh, Columbus stumbled onto the continent. I think that is sort of the beginning of uh, sort of misperceptions and because there's such a lack of accurate information about Native people in the popular media or in academic institutions, people tend to fill that vacuum with um, negative stereotypes, silly stereotypes. American Indians have changed the world. They have changed the economy of the world. They have changed the languages of the world through the words that they have added to the languages. They've changed the food supply, the agriculture. They have changed the democratic government systems of the world. There's almost no area of life in the world today that has not been affected by the American Indians. I think the single most uh, thing misunderstood about American Indians by the media is the notion of it being just a race. Um, it's also a political entity. Most Indians are tribes or governments that uh, make the same kinds of decisions as larger uh, governments or sometimes smaller governments. They also make uh, multi-million dollar economic decisions in their role as corporations because in addition to being a government, they're a corporation, which is probably unique to American government. The fact that it was because of Indian treaties that we were guaranteed certain rights. When we gave up millions of acres of lands, like in the Dakotas, and retained lands, we weren't taken away and put on, put on reservations like, say, a lot of the tribes in Oklahoma were. We retained lands that were already our ancestral lands. But as a guarantee of the treaties, we were given certain rights, such as an education for our children, health care, uh, self-government, all of the things that non-Indians seem to think are welfare are actually rights that were guaranteed by treaty. And a good example would be on Native American um, uh, religions. Totally, there's, at least in Minnesota and Dakota's area, very, very little knowledge about the, from the non-Indian press in dealing with those religious issues that are coming up through sacred um, burial grounds, uh, sacred lands, rituals, things of that nature. And um, there seems to be um, a great deal of misunderstanding. The major media has been really very episodic or crisis oriented in its coverage. Or, yeah, as I like to say, the colorful remnant of America's past. And, hasn't really progressed significantly beyond that, that kind of thinking. It's like they're an exotic minority somewhere, and uh, let's go to the powwow. Let's get all the magnificent color and sound and music and movement, and it'll make our Indian coverage. But it doesn't get to the part where it really covers, uh, it goes from what I say, the beads and feathers to the bread and butter issues the kinds of things that all people are concerned with, like putting a roof over your head and feeding your kids and getting health care. These are issues that really do affect us here as contemporary Native peoples, and you don't find the coverage there because it isn't as exciting or, or heart-wrenching as an, an Indian as victim story. I mean, you get lots of drunk Indian kind of stories, and unfortunately, two major broadcast awards or two journalistic awards have been given out for that same story. And that's our feeling is how long does this have to go on? The media today does not understand really that Native people are living and that we have a future. And that's something that's in the psyche of the world, that Native people are 
living somewhere in the last century, if we are alive at all, and if we are living differently, then we are somehow less than Indian. If we are doing the non-Indian things, if we are speaking English, if we are driving cars, then we are not Indian. We are supposed to be traditional, as if the traditions of last century are traditional to native people of this hemisphere. The most misunderstood aspect of American Indian Affairs, I believe, is the status of the tribal government. The fact that they're independent sovereigns, uh, and that, furthermore, that they've been recognized as such uh, from the very beginning, through treaties, through statute, through court decisions, from 1789 down to the present day. I think in part we've just overlooked the importance of American Indians in world history. Uh, the Indians were so uh, busy just trying to stay alive during the last 500 years that they certainly have not been able to make their case as loudly in the, in the world forum as perhaps would have been desirable. But now at the end of the 20th century, the Native people have survived the worst of times and we see a real Native American renaissance going on. We see it with the new young writers who are coming along, with the new young artists, with the educational people in the Native community. We see it in the, in the tribal colleges, in the new museums that are rising up. American Indians are really taking a forefront position now, I think, in helping our society understand the problems around us. And in the 21st century, I think they're going to be major leaders. Well, everything you do in the media is done in a hurry. And uh, history heretofore has not been one of the uh, prerequisites. There's no such thing as a, a, a bar association for journalists, so there has no level that you have to come into to begin your profession. And as a result, you come in not knowing these things. The American school system has been uh, inadequate in teaching the notion of uh, where tribal governments fit into city, county, state models. And so these journalists reflect their society when they start their careers, and they have no clue about some of these other things. When they start encountering them, and it's usually in a, some sort of uh, jurisdictional confrontation, then all of a sudden they have to cover the issue without having the background to cover the issue. The history is written by the victors. And in our case, all of the history books were written by the non-Indians. And it was their interpretation of who they thought we were, their interpretations of what we were, that uh, non-Indian people have been reading about for generations. So in order, I think, to change and to re-educate America, you know, we, we, we can't just say we're going to educate America. We have to re-educate them. And that's really harder than educating them the first time around because a lot of uh, non-Indians have all these stereotypical misconceptions locked into their minds already. And uh, there's no one, by God, not an, especially an Indian, going to tell them that they're wrong because that's trying to make them politically correct. When in essence, all we're trying to do is make things historically correct. When they come to Native American issues, it's usually at Thanksgiving and you get the old corn bean squash kind of thing and kids cutting out the paper headdresses. Well, guess what? The pilgrims didn't allow the natives to sit at the same table because they thought they were godless heathens. And, you know, that's, that's not right. But this image still hangs in people's mind that, oh, the great pilgrims invited the Indians to come share dinner. Well, if it hadn't been for those tribes, they wouldn't have had any dinner, and there wouldn't have been any pilgrims. And these are the kinds of things you never hear about in, in school. This misunderstanding persists because of the same old movie that's running through everyone's head. It's a confrontational movie. It is a costuming movie. Everyone has an idea that uh, Native people are, the, are all Cheyennes or all Sioux, that we all look like the prototype of the North American Plains Indian people when they think we exist at all. The United States is very quick to go around the world to Panama or to the Persian Gulf in order to enforce what we see as our treaty rights in other parts of the world. But somehow when it comes to treaty rights right here at home inside the United States, we've been extremely lax about that. So I'd like to see us start by first giving the Native Americans the rights that are guaranteed to them in the treaties that they have signed. So if we could start by following the treaties, I think that the whole country would be a lot better off. In a single word, treaty. Because if the media 
understood treaties that there are still valid agreements between the United States government and Indian tribes and would make such a clamor in the radio, television, and the newspapers that our treaties are being violated day after day after day and make America stand up and, and live up to the guarantees in those treaties, everything else would follow. All of the things that we've been fighting for for 200 years would happen simply be by honoring our treaties. Actually, I think the question is uh, a false premise. I, I don't think the media ought to focus on one thing in American Indians, and it's one of the things I've worked hard to change. Um, if you were to read the media accounts of American Indians over the past two years, probably the two most issues that gained the most ink would be the mascot issue and the uh, museum issues. Both of those issues are important, but there are also a lot of chronic issues dealing with live Indians that matter that aren't covered. Um, so I think you have to get the media to think about covering it as an ongoing developing story as they would any other ongoing developing story with all of the facets and all of the gray areas. John and I will be back right after these messages. Good, I think we got through that. Okay, Gary, you're going to be going down to uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta I'm going to July. be uh, attending the uh, uh, National Conference of the Native American Journalists Association. And this is a, a particularly important conference, particularly as it relates to the, to the video we've just seen. We are going to be having every uh, major minority professional journalism group meeting all at once. These are the blacks, the Asians, the Hispanics. Right, and, uh, and of course Native the Native Americans. Americans. It's a uh, Native American Journalists Association on, on, on whose board I serve. And we'll be meeting with our counterparts from NABJ, the Native uh, National Association of Black Journalists, the National Association of Hispanic Journalists, and the Asian American Journalists Association. We're all sort of stuck in the same boat when it comes to coverage by the dominant society, so to speak. Uh, many of our communities get stuck with uh, the more dismal aspects of our communities and, and we don't feel that it's fair. Uh, how, how do you think that can change, Gary? It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, you know, we've, we've talked about this, we've discussed it uh, at various conferences. The, uh, the media groups in, in the country know all about it. We've uh, heard them say, yeah, we need to change. But what, what needs to be changed in your opinion? First of all, a lot of attitudes, a lot of thinking, we have to reach the decision makers, the people at the top of these businesses, the managing editors, the owners of stations, the news directors. Uh, I've worked how about, with them. I've how worked at a couple employment? of seminars where we've had, you know, the, the lower echelon kinds of types. But we need to reach those people too. And as you just said, employment. we need more native faces in those newsrooms. We have to do a couple of things. First, get our people more involved in this yeah. business and realize you can make a living and, and make another point that their presence is valuable. Yep. Every newsroom across the nation that I know of is, is well aware that their, their color balance is not quite mm -hmm. right. And they need to correct some of the coverage of their communities by adding more how people. How can we change color. that? How, how can we bring about that change? Uh, we, we've, uh, like I said, we've talked about it with, uh, with editors uh, across the country, newspaper owners, publishers, uh, managing editors. Um, and little has changed uh, at this point. Uh, what, what really needs to be done in this area? The uh, Unity 94 conference is actually is one step. We've realized that we, uh, in separate bodies, really don't have that much power. Our voices are very small and our numbers are small, but if you get six to 7,000 minority journalists, journalists of color mm -hmm. together and raise that point, uh, I think we cannot be ignored at that point. We're going to be assessing our industry. We're going to be taking a hard look at hiring practices. Radio, television, Radio, TV, print. Uh, we're going to be talking about how people get into decision-making powers, who makes decisions about how the stories get assigned and how they get covered. 
and hopefully uh, raise the consciousness of everyone in the business. And we hope to get, uh, we're shooting to get the president there to, to draw this kind of mm -hmm. national attention. And if you get President Clinton there, they cannot ignore us and the points we want to make which means more people like you and I who have been through this business, both in print and in uh, broadcast now, we just need to take more advantage of, of, of the resource. Some of the problems that we've, uh, we've discussed uh, for years is how we're portrayed, how we're covered. Uh, we're, when, when, there are, when there's a news story about Native Americans, it's, it's usually something violent. Uh, it's usually something mm -hmm. having to do with alcohol abuse. Uh, bums in the streets, et cetera, that sort of thing. What, what, what needs to be changed there in your opinion? We have to educate um, our counterparts, the decision makers, in saying Native Americans are part of this society, yet we're not. We have to be allowed to, to be more than just uh, closed into the little boxes and the cliches and the stereotypes. I've seen some very, very encouraging uh, progress. Uh, even in, uh, here in, a in, mm -hmm. uh, in Anchorage, we've seen some, some nice changes. But that's a, a step in the right direction, but it has to be continued. We have to teach more of our people to step forward and let the media know when there are success stories. And that's one thing that, that I've had difficulty with as a journalist, particularly as a native. Yeah. More of our people don't step forward and say something good about themselves occasionally because we're, we're taught not to. But that's generally the way these, these stories and the thinking gets changed because um, most editors and assignment people cannot read the minds of natives in the communities, particularly in a bush situation when you've got rural communities and people so spread out who may not be as familiar with the media as say, someone here in Anchorage or you and I. We know how these things work, but if we can get more of our information flowing towards the media and saying use it as a tool or a yeah. weapon if need be. Yeah, I think there's uh, the, the one thing that's occurred to me, you know, over, over the years is that when when we are excluded uh, not by not deliberately by the news media, um, that exclusion uh, makes us appear to to not be part of a, a part of society. Right, right. So we're generally looked upon as a, a, a something, a, an afterthought, so to speak. Right, right. Um, and, and that's something that we, I think we, we, we need to change. And, and NAJA, for, for one uh, organization, is going, to do, is going to do a lot to, to change that, I hope. Well, that's part of the mission now. Now, the, the train of thought you were on was exactly what we need. We are excluded uh, through sometimes I would say overt acts of omission but mostly I think it's it's a it's an ignorance mm -hmm. because you're dealing with uh, people in the dominant media who are products of the American educational system which really hasn't lent itself well to coverage of native people to sharing the knowledge and it certainly has not done anything that I can see of to educate uh, the public about contemporary native issues I mean what we are today uh, if you just say take Alaska for a very good example, you know, you've got major corporations and, and native groups are in the top five, top ten, and these yeah. are big money makers and the only color most people should be worried about there is green. But we have to be allowed to be more than just the colorful dancers also. You know, pr pride in our culture and heritage is extremely important to us, but that does not make up the totality of our communities and our activities. There's so much going on in native, native communities. During the Roman era, 28 was considered old. In the 1800s, 60 was over the hill. Ah, you got it! Green back here with John Tetpon. Mr. Gary Five literally had to run out the door to go to that Naja board meeting that he was talking about earlier. One Sky has some exciting subjects coming up in the future, huh, John? Yeah, what do. are they? Well, one of the uh, more interesting ones I think will be uh, the criminal justice system in rural Alaska, and with uh, we'll have that hopefully next week with uh, Ed McNally of the DA's office and uh, John Salemi from the Public Defender's Agency. 
that is going to be an excellent one, criminal justice system here in Alaska. Exactly. That's, that's something that's very, very important to the people in rural Alaska. What else is coming up? Well, we hope to have something on native inmates. Uh, uh -huh. As you know, we uh, uh, comprise about 20% of the population, mm -hmm. but we have more than 35% uh, of our young men in prison. So we'll be discussing that with uh, some people from the state. Mm -hmm. We'll also have panels on violence and male suicide. Exactly. And those, those will be coming up too. I think they're very important. And some of the ones that we'll be uh, looking for in the future are programs uh, on such things as the mayor's race here in Anchorage. Uh, we have 20,000 natives here and uh, we'll be discussing what the mayoral candidates uh, will be uh, promising Oh, good. Know, I look to, forward to, to that one. To, to us here in Anchorage. <laughs> Maybe we can get some candidates on and ask them in person. Let's do exactly. that. That's, that's a good one. Other, uh, other items of interest. Uh, as you know, there are some Indian reservations down in Lower 48 uh, establishing and creating gambling uh, bingo mm -hmm. uh, casinos. And we'll be discussing that uh, that uh, topic with the possibility of, of, exactly. of our native tribes having casinos up here. That that sounds very interesting too. Another one is uh, Ratnet. Uh, its future. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, we've uh, we've been looking at uh, possibly Ratnet going out of business. Uh, somebody else wants to buy it, and uh, we don't know where that's going to go. But so but we we will be discussing that that topic as well. I certainly wish I could buy Ratnet. Right. <laughs> what else is coming up? Um, education with Alaska Natives. That's another issue that we'll be talking about. The most exciting thing on One Sky is that we will be dealing with issues that affect our lives here in Alaska and our lives across the North or issues of Native Americans across the nation. As you know, Heartbeat Alaska is shown now in, in Navajo Nation TV5 as well as One Sky. So we're really moving in that direction. If you have any topics that you'd like us to discuss or you think would make great material for a panel discussion, give us a call. Our new number here is area code 907-272-8111. And our fax is area code 907-272-7005. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, Jeannie. And yeah. we'll see you next week on another One Sky, and the subject will be? The criminal justice system. All right. See you Alaska. then. Thank you. I think that um, the, the reason this conference came, came about um, actually was about in 1985 when we started working on it in the D Dakotas area. Um, the United Sioux Tribe invited me out to appear for um, uh, federal hearings on civil rights violations. We had hearings in, in Sioux Falls, Pierre, and Aberdeen. And I must say, um, I could close my eyes and think back this could be Meridian, Mississippi in 1930.